Hey guys, it's Leah Hona. Come with me as we make cinnamon roll stays. So we're gonna start off with a microwaved warm milk, emphasis on the warm, and then add some quick active yeast. I'm doubling the recipe with everything because I come from a family of nine siblings total and this house needs to eat. Oh yeah, and be sure to spoon in your flour, sugar, and powdered sugar so you have the same consistency. Trust me. And don't turn on your electric mixer full blast like I just did. <laughs> Yeah, that was a rookie mistake on my part. And this one too, because this is not a repeating video. I just decided to use a half cup instead of a full cup. So I had to keep spooning it in over and over like 12 times. And I did this because I couldn't find the full cup in my house. So I got lazy, but now look at me, I'm regretting it. And I was like, that was a lot. Honestly, it would have been easier to go and find the full cup instead of waste all my time on that. But I was thinking more in the moment. And then you're gonna get your rubber scraper and mix it together to make sure it's all blended well. I start kneading my dough in the bowl first because it's still really liquidy and when I add enough flour that gives me the consistency I want, then I will flour my surface and I will continue kneading from there. You wanna knead from here for about five to 10 minutes until you get, it all just depends, um, until you get the consistency you want. The consistency is you don't want it to be too sticky, but you don't want it to be too dry. You want it to kind of have like a tacky texture and that's important to remember because if you over knead the dough, your texture is going to be so tender and your cinnamon rolls are going to come out so dry and so rough, it's not going to taste good. So don't over knead. So I'm using the same bowl, I just wash it out and then you're going to spray it so that it doesn't stick because this rising process is important. You're going to put it in there, then you're going to use some saran wrap. Spray your saran wrap, please, because the dough is going to rise double in its size and if you get dough stuck on there, you're going to have to throw that dough away and that sucks. So now we're going to wait for the dough to rise for one to three hours. If you let it rise for three hours in the first process, you can skip the second rising process, which I'm going to do because I'm a lazy person and then I'm cleaning while I'm going. Always clean while you go, it's way faster. Then we're going to do our mixture right here here this is just brown sugar and cinnamon i do not know why i held up the cinnamon like that for you guys that was weird anyways in this process try to get rid of the brown sugar clumps because when you pour it on there you want it to spread nice and evenly it should look something like this and then you're gonna get your dough our dough has risen and look at that so fluffy you're gonna flour your surface and then you're gonna pour it on there and then we are going to start rolling you are going to roll it into a large rectangle that is the best shape for cinnamon roll dough in my opinion because everything spread evenly and you get the most of the dough instead of having to throw away the ends so here i am just rolling it out but like i said i doubled my recipe so my dough was so big i had to move my camera back but you're gonna roll it out until it's about a fourth to a half inch thick on all sides evenly. Then you're gonna get your melted butter and you're gonna spread it on there. Try to spread it as close to the edge as you can so we can use as much dough as we can. And then we're gonna take our brown sugar cinnamon mixture and we're gonna pour it all on there evenly. And then this part, you're going to use your hands. I'm gonna press it into the dough so that when we roll up the dough, you don't have any mixture falling out. And then we're gonna start rolling. This process was so satisfying to watch when I speeded it up. But anyways, when you start rolling, make sure you keep it nice and tight so that when you cut it, nothing will fall out and it won't be loose and then you won't have bread going everywhere. Then we're gonna get a glass pan, we're gonna spray it so it doesn't stick and then I'm gonna use a butter knife. Some people use floss, but I don't have any floss and I'm not gonna go look for it. So I'm just using what I have in the kitchen. And then as you can see, I'm measuring with my finger. That part of your finger is an inch long. So if you double the recipe, use an inch. If you didn't, keep it to half an inch. After you do this process, you usually let it rise in the pan for about an extra 30 minutes. But if you let it rise three hours before, you can just skip that part and pop them right in the oven because cinnamon rolls take forever. So you're going to keep cutting until they look something like this. Fire. And then I'm just wiping down my work surface over here and then we're going to start on the frosting. We're going to start with some cream cheese. Make sure that it's room temperature, some melted butter, and then powdered sugar. Like I said, spoon in your powdered sugar. And then we're going to add some vanilla extract. And then we're going to start mixing and this frosting can be really thick at first so what i'm doing is adding milk until i get the consistency i like i like my frosting a little bit more runny some people like it more thick but it all just depends on who you are so there's a taste test it was so good i'm gonna pop them into the oven on 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes and while we're waiting i'm just dancing jamming out to some music that my sister was playing i was feeling the vibe if you guys know what song you think i'm listening to write it down in the comments below but now our cinnamon rolls are done we take them out of the oven and then after a five to ten minute rest we start putting on our frosting please wait for those five to ten minutes to let it cool down because if you do not you will have the thinnest layer of frosting ever and that sucks because one of the best parts of cinnamon rolls is the frosting so i know it's a long process but please just wait those five to ten minutes to let it cool down i promise you it'll be worth it and like i said 
said, if you let it rise three hours before, you don't have to do the second process of letting it rise, which was letting it rise another 30 minutes before you put it in the oven. So this is a good part. And then I'm giving a taste test. It literally tasted so fire. I was dancing as I tasted it. And that is all for today. Thank you guys. Bye.